What's up everybody, my name is Cap and welcome to a Minecraft tutorial and today I want to talk to you about the command block. It's been a while since I've done a tutorial so I just kind of had the itch to do one and thought I would show you guys how to use this awesome little block here. Now for starters, one thing that you cannot do is you cannot actually craft these things. If you go into say your you know even creative mode or whatever and you try and search for a command block you'll see it's not there. The only way you can get one is to give yourself one by a command line prompt. So you can give cap 137. Now 137 is the ID block for this particular item here. So see now it gave me one there. That's the only way you can get one. And of course you need to be able to use commands if you're playing single player by yourself then you either have to have creative mode on or have player cheats enabled. If you're playing in a multiplayer well you gotta be able to have op privileges or better so it'll be an operator, a mod, or an admin, something that you can use command line stuff to give your stuff, give yourself stuff. Now the command block what it's used for mostly, the most people like to use it for, is for adventure related stuff like making adventure maps because what it does is it gives you full command of this, uh, it gives you full control of this command line down here so all the stuff that you can all the little commands and all these options you have right here on these various pages and stuff these are all things plus some that you can tell the uh, um, command block to actually do now one of the first things I like to do when I'm messing with these is just set up a command block to give me some more command blocks so every time I click it you can see it's giving me one here it's a pretty simple command just like I just did on the uh, command line there okay now we are into the actual interface for the command block and kind of explain what you have here you have the console command here and you can see a give you know give at p137 here now let me explain here because you got these three different options down here these selectors the at p at r and at a now anytime you put at p on there what it's going to do is it's going to do whatever commands you tell it to to the closest player in the game which most of the time is going to be the person who actually activates it that's just kind of how it works if you do at R in the command, say you do, you know, right here, you do an at R like this when you actually do it, it's going to pick a random player who's currently in the world. Now, right now, if I did that, I'm the only one in here, so it would pick me, of course, because, well, I'm the only one there. And if you do at A, it'll pick all players, so every person in the world. So this is one of those options it gives you to be able to pick, you know, to give everybody an item or to, you know, what it, there's a whole bunch of different options you can do there. So anyway, what I'm going to go through here is I'm going to go through and show you some of the basic commands that the command block would use for doing adventure maps. As you can see, there's quite a few set up here. The first section I'm going to go into is game difficulty settings here. This is one of those that, um, before I really get into that, I'm going to say the command block is really good because it allows you as the map creator to be able to maintain control of the environment while the player's playing it. Because obviously if somebody downloads your map and they're messing with it, they aren't going you're not going to be able to you know watch them play and say okay I need to make sure they don't do such and such or I need to make sure that such and such happens at a certain time you know that you can't really do that but with the cam command block it allows you to be able to do that so like with games difficulty settings say you have a player going through a map and there's a specific spot you don't want them to have to encounter any mods you can set it over to peaceful or you know vice versa with easy medium or hard and the command for all of these is basically the same here you do you know slash difficulty zero and that's going to be zero for peaceful one for easy two for medium and of course three for hard and you know anytime you click these you'll see set game difficulty to zero that's what all these are right here okay that's pretty much the basics on these little things right here as far as the difficulty goes now when you get into um, some other things that you want to be able, be able to control the world around you besides just the difficulty I'm going to go ahead and change this back to peaceful just in case um, one of the other things you can do here is you can set your spawn point so that anytime you got a player progressing it's kind of like a checkpoint system if you will so the spawn point here is just slash spawn point and then put the at p there so it'll set the spawn point of the closest player now you can give it the coordinates you can put in here the xyz coordinates if you wanted to and that way it specifically sets the coordinates for wherever you tell it to but you can see right here see i'll set it here and you can see it set my spawn point there move a little bit further forward and you can see it kind of changes depending on where i'm actually standing so you know this is one of those really nice options you have here to set a checkpoint before a player is about to do something or before you do something yourself if you're playing in your own world 
the next thing of course is being able to set the time this one's pretty simple everybody knows the command line with this but of course with a command block you can set it so that it does it um, you can set it do it at intervals of course um, you can force it to um, see so yeah, I set it back to zero that way it's always daytime there I know what some people like to do is they'll get this command block and have it set to zero and they'll set it up on a minecart track that goes around in a big circle and it'll have an actuator plate there and so every time it goes around it activates the time block here and sets the time back to zero that way it's all time it's always daytime so of course time you know time setting is one of those important things in a game too just to make sure you control whether you want it to be always night or always daytime or you know whatever if it's supposed to change time settings and stuff then um, you know you can have it set to whatever you want to there see um, there's I can't remember hold on let me see here so 1,000 I think there's what 24,000 ticks in a day I can't remember I'm not gonna try and add it up I, I can't remember exactly what it is to go all the way around but I think if you set to 12,000 it like um, let me see 12,000 click okay say so 12,000 it takes it halfway around over there so it's always going to select it back over there and 24,000 will take it right back over to where it was at let's put this back on zero Blip, there's the sun okay now another thing you can do of course is by controlling the weather here so you do slash weather and you can do thunder which of course is like a rainstorm you can do rain you can do snow or you can do clear and so you click the button and you'll see it go back and now we got us a downpour and so this is good for being able to maintain weather control whether you want it to be always on always off whatever so set this back to clear and then I'll show you something else you can do with it give it a chance to clear up so you can see how it actually works here and we're back to daytime again now something you can do as you can see over here I have plus time so what you can do is you can set it so that it only lasts a certain amount of time so let's see we'll do thunder space and I'll put 8 for 8 seconds so you click the button I'll watch it okay so we got us a nice little thunderstorm here bring on the rain and lightning and thunder and all that hellacious stuff that comes with a thunderstorm and then a nice steady 8 seconds later and it's over now what you can do with this is you could go through and set like slash weather clear and set it to a million. I don't know how long a million seconds is, but it's a long time. And that way when you use it, it'll maintain staying clear. And that way you never have to worry about rainstorms or any of that other garbage there. Alright, now something else that's in the game here is if you ever want to be able to change game rules and stuff, you can always do slash game rules and it'll tell you. Whoops. Game rule. There we go. Okay, and you'll see that it's got these different options here. Command block output, do fire tick, do mob loot, do mob spawning, do tile drops, keep inventory, and mob griefing. You can toggle all of these to change up how the game's working here. Now the first thing is the command block output. You can turn it on or off there. Now what this means is anytime you see me clicking one of these buttons here, you see how it's saying it's got the little text in the bottom left hand corner there. Well, if you turn it off, now anytime you click anything, it's not doing anything see it's not actually pulling up on the display and why that's good to have there is because if you're in a let's say a multiplayer server and any time a commands done or a multiplayer block or something like that it's going to pop up a message on everybody who's an operator screen because it's just the way it works and so if you got something that's like really heavily laden with command blocks out there well then you're just spamming the operators all day long with your you know outputs basically so you can always go through and change this to be an off and of course if you're setting up a custom map for people then you wouldn't have to have the you know every time it does something especially if it's supposed to be a secret and you don't want them to know about it you can just turn it off and the command for that is do slash game rule and then you just do the actual command you're wanting to do so command block output is at default here and it's the same thing for true now if you notice how it says command and then it's capital B and capital O, it is case sensitive. It's very case sensitive. If you type it in wrong, it's just going to tell you that it doesn't know what the world you're talking about there. The next game mode, um, game setting, I guess you can change, game rule, is fire ticks. Now what this does, you do, do fire tick, as you can see, case sensitive again, I set to false. And what that means is that fire, if it's false, fire won't spread. So if something lights on fire, it's going to just go out where it's currently at. It's not going to just keep on spreading forever. So, you know, if you got a map, you don't want somebody to accidentally burn down the place, but you have fire set up as lighting or something, you can turn it off. And that way, it's not actually going to burn the place down. 
Now do mob loot here. Now what you have here is basically the same command slash game rule do mob loot true. And what this will do is it changes whether or not when you kill a mob if they actually drop loot or not. If you set it to off then anytime you kill a mob they're not going to drop anything. I have mine set to true on here just for showing the example or whatever but that's pretty much the case of it there. So if you got an adventure map and you don't want them to be able to use specific items or you got a server and you're wanting people only to use the items you're using like in, uh, let's say, a Hunger Games map or something, you can turn this on here or turn it off, I guess, and that way uh, nobody can get anything. Mob spawning does kind of what you think it was. The do mob spawning true, you can turn it so that mobs spawn on or off. Now, if you turn a mob spawn off, it can they can still spawn in via... Um, mob spawner blocks I think now don't quote me on that let me see here let's check this out and see set that to false done make sure this isn't on peaceful real quick I'll set it on easy okay come over here real quick and I'll just drop a creeper okay so you can actually do that if they're true but let me go through and do here watch him disappear Bloop, he's gone. Okay, set him back to medium. Come back over here. All right. Do mob spawning. See, I set it to. I set it as false. And what it does, that's that's right. Okay, I'm got it. All right, I'm, I'm on top of it here. And what it means is when you set it to false, is they don't spawn naturally. So with these spawn eggs or mob spawners or things that would cause them to actually generate besides non-natural things, as in like being in the dark, then um, they won't spawn if it's turned off. Now the next one here is do tile drops here. And what this is, is if you have it on, uh, let's see here. Let me change my game mode one, uh, zero. Whoops. There we go. Okay, so now I'm in regular old mode here. See, normally if you go through and you decide to break up a block like this, you know you got the block down there you can pick up. Get you one extra one there. But if you go through and you turn the tile, ta or the, uh, tile drops off, make sure I have that set up here like this clickety okay updated now when you go through there and you can still break the blocks they don't wait a minute hold on I'm not sure if I did something do tile drops oh I'm stupid good lord done okay click there we go sorry about that brain fart okay so now when you do this whatever that's you click kicking hold on do tile drops true am I hitting cancel or something hold on done must be oh it must be an opt player in creative mode oh, okay sorry okay there's a lesson right there <laughs> good lord uh, is it one for creative mode I think so yeah okay click now it's actually been updated sorry about that I'm kinda stupid here I didn't realize what I was actually doing but anyway if you had it in single player after you changed it then what you would do is it wouldn't actually drop any tiles here so that's what that does sorry about the confusion that was just a minor brain fart okay keep inventory this is a cool one too keep inventory keep is lowercase inventory is case sensitive what this means is if you have it set to on when you die you keep everything that's on you so everything that's in your like um, your armor your weapons all the stuff you have equipped everything in your active bar down there stays the same so you watch it you know go ahead and kill myself respawn it's on boom I have all my stuff still that's pretty awesome there especially for adventure maps if you you know if you have this thing down here where you have them all on so that they can't get anything except for you want them to have same thing with you if you want to turn it off you just change it to false and then mob griefing if you want to leave that on what it does is whoa hey hold on a second thank you camera let's do this mob griefing is now turned off and what that means is that let's say you have a creeper show up out here you hit him when he blows up Oh, sorry. Let me stay a little closer. Come here. Get mad. Boom. He doesn't blow up the earth there. No damage done, or no ground is broken by the creepers or any other mobs. And if you have that turned on like that where they can't, I mean, where it's set to false like that, withers can't destroy blocks. Um, I don't know for sure if Endermen can move blocks or not. I've never actually tested that. So that's kind of cool. All right, so moved around to a couple more um, game-related things here teleport now this is a cool one here if you've ever done this before if you've ever used teleport in command line things obviously you just do slash TP space you could do the character's name and it'll teleport whoever you talk to wherever you want them to go 
but you know if you're wanting to be able to teleport just the person who pushed the button you use the at p symbol here of course if you use at r it'll randomly target a player and teleport them somewhere else or at all would target all players in the world and teleport them wherever you're telling it to now so i have mine set here i click it boom teleported now i'm way up here right above it and then i have it set one up here so i can click it and go right back to where i was at now here's one thing I was going to show you real quick that's kind of cool is that these command blocks can be activated via redstone. So if you wanted to be able to have something done automatically when they enter an area, you could have a pressure plate um, that activate via redstone. When they walk over it, bloop, oh no, you know, they go back to the area you want them to instead of them having to manually activate a button because you know if it's a secret map or something they may not know to push a button or they may not know to stand on a certain spot or how to do it or whatever. So that's one of those options you have of being able to do it just via redstones with a little um, with a little uh, pressure plate there. So head back down here. All right, and the next two these are kind of basic here. This is just say and tell. Now say is and you know you just say something. He goes hi cap, and that'll say it to whoever pushes the local button here. A tell is kind of like a whisper. See the command block whispers to me. Hi, a nice seductive voice. Now the command for that is just slash uh, slash say whatever you want to and if you can do at p it'll it'll say whoever's closest by it'll say hi to them or whatever the message is supposed to be of course r and a work the same as everything else random and all players and uh, tells the same way here slash tell now it doesn't matter you can see i have a slash slash tell at p hi over here and then over here i have it slash say hi at ip it doesn't matter where the at is in correlation to them it does the same thing both of them there now, that's kind of the bare bones basics for command blocks, and I know that kind of covered a lot of information as is. You get into some stuff where they all have arguments, and the arguments I'm not going to go into in this video. If somebody wants me to do an advanced version, I can uh, for a part two, but I'm just kind of showing the basics really. But the arguments are is you can make it so that each block only does certain things with certain criteria. So let's say real quick that just hypothetically you want to teleport players that are above level three and below level seven so three four five and six anybody that's level three four five and six tell you could insert the commands and stuff in here with some specific arguments and you know you can make it so that um, you can set certain people's game modes so if you're less than level five your game mode is easy and if it's a higher than five then it's hard and if you get to you know there's just so many things you can do with that i'm not going to go into it too much but there's all kinds of different arguments for these that go into the advanced stuff so if y'all want to see me do a tutorial on the advanced stuff then you know just let me know and i will i don't mind at all I hope you guys enjoy doing this, and I hope I kind of taught you something. I know these have been out for a little while, so it's not exactly new to some people, but I know this is also more along the lines of some complex stuff. You know, if you don't use cheats and stuff, then you may or may not actually notice that you have these kinds of options. So, anyway, this is the basic level stuff. If you guys want to see me do some more of this, let me know. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. In the meantime, you all have a good one, and I will catch you later.